Algebra 2 Cram, New York State, Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Basics, Sign of Trigonometric Functions, Concept Number 9, Quadrant 2, and the Reference Angle. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master. What we're doing here is so effective. I'm coaching you to turn your wants and desires of getting an A or perfect test scores into a brand new paradigm. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2. If I could stick every math student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I probably would. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to get your healthy dose of Algebra 2 in the form of a complete cram session, okay? So order the complete cram session by in inboxing me at memedicine at gmail.com. You have peers, classmates, and colleagues who are probably struggling in Algebra 2 as well. So tell them, too, to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com. You'll be glad you spread the word and give them the same knowledge that you're getting because they'll make great study buddies. Last but not least, the concept of cramming is often looked down upon. But what people are actually thinking of is hurrying, which is a result of fear and can consequently be destructive to your learning process. We're not hurrying here. We're cramming and there's a big difference. Hurrying is jam packing tons and tons of unorganized information into your mental spiritual DNA over a very tiny amount of elapsed time, whereas cramming is taking quantum leaps in your understanding in an organized way um, in what seems like an instant, okay? So let's delve into the concept of quadrant two and the reference angle. Standard position and reference angles. What is the reference angle theta sub ref for an obtuse angle theta located in quadrant two? I'll give you a brief moment to think and definitely press pause if you need to. All right, so hopefully by now you've come up with an answer, and if not, that's completely fine. So let's just dive right into this. Before uh, establishing the reference angle in quadrant two, it's first important to properly differentiate between the concept of theta ref in quadrant one, um, because this is where the concept starts off and the signs of any trigonometric value, such as sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, inverse, cosine, you name it, depend on the signs of x and y and the quadrant where the terminal side, this side of theta ref is found, okay? But the original theta ref starts off in quadrant one, and I'll show you what I mean. In order to understand the concept of theta ref, in quadrant two, we have to first organize the concept of standard position in quadrant one, okay? And by organizing um, this in your mind, you'll be able to better understand why uh, it's important to differentiate what quadrant you're in when referring to the trigonometric value of some angle, okay? Okay. An angle in standard position has six key features. First, an angle theta, as shown here, in standard position um, has its vertex located at zero at uh, the origin of an x, y Cartesian coordinate plane. Second, the ray um, is on the positive x axis, and that's called the initial side ray, or rather the, the initial side ray is found on the positive x axis. And the other ray terminates um, within quadrant one, and this is called the terminal side ray, okay? But we'll call it R for short, just to keep things neat. And let's say by chance you have some point arbitrarily drawn right here, about right here, and you call that point P, and it has coordinates X and Y, X referring to its X coordinate, 
and y referring to its y coordinate. For our purposes, we're going to say that this newly formed segment, which is no longer a ray, is it's going to terminate here at x, okay? So about right here, and it rises to the level of y right here. And so what we've done now basically is we've established a right triangular formation in our imaginations, and let's just go ahead and indicate that. And so basically, this is the foundational figure that's used to ca calculate all the trigonometric functions, or for the most part, the trigonometric concepts calculated in Algebra 2. Okay, and you have to note that the x-coordinates, again, as I said previously, can be positive, but only positive if you're in quadrants 1 and quadrants 4, but negative in quadrant 2 and 3, and quadrant 2 is definitely our quadrant of interest. And you could say the same for the y-coordinate. It's going to be positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So here we have a negative x-coordinate, positive y-coordinate. But it's going to be negative, of course, in quadrants 3 and 4. Okay? So just keep that in mind. And no, I want you to note that r is the measurement of the hypotenuse segment length. So r is equivalent to the square root of x squared, that's the x coordinate squared, plus y squared, the y coordinate squared. So it's immaterial or irrelevant whether or not we're in quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4, because r, due to the squaring and then taking the square root, will always have a positive magnitude because it's a measurement of a length. Okay? So it's not coordinate location, rather, it's just a measurement that doesn't take into account location in the coordinate, Cartesian coordinate system. All right, so now we're getting over to quadrant two. And before doing that, it's simple as this. For quadrant one, if you watched the previous um, cram session, you would have known that our theta ref is simply equal to theta. Theta is an acute angle located between quadrantal angles, zero degrees and 90 degrees, okay? And quadrantal angles, in case you forgot, are any angles whose terminal side ray ends on the x-axis or y-axis. And it could be the x-axis either in the positive direction, 0, negative direction, 180 degrees, the y-axis in the 90 degree direction, or the 270 degree direction, okay? So what I want you to understand is that whenever you're calculating an inverse trigonometric function, which is going to give you a theta, the theta you're getting is always the reference angle, okay? So you would have to specify which quadrant you're dealing with by using certain calculations, which I'm going to show you pretty soon. And these calculations are quadrant specific. So quadrant two has its own calculation for theta ref, quadrant three has its own calculation for the reference angle, and so does quadrant four, okay? So, for any obtuse angle formed in quadrant 2, we can call that angle theta, and we can allow its terminal side ray to go to this extent here. Um, theta reference is going to be this positive acute angle that... Um, is made with the x-axis, okay? That is the negative aspect of the x-axis. So although this is your angle of interest theta, the reference angle that your calculator would probably be calculating an inverse trigonometric function for, such as inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent, would be this theta reference. So let's say theta reference is uh, 30 degrees, the obtuse angle um, is going to be 150 degrees, okay? So I think you get the drift. Is there anything else I want to mention? So again, in quadrant two, theta reference is the um, positive acute angle 
because you know the angle um well actually it could be the negative it's the the acute angle basically made with the x-axis and here goes the calculation for it theta reference is equal to the quadrantal extent of quadrant 2 which is 180 degrees minus our obtuse angle theta or if you're just trying to find theta our obtuse angle of interest you can take the extent of quadrant 2 and subtract subtract theta reference the acute angle made with the x-axis from it and we know that our reference angle is always going to be acute because if you're traveling in um, a counterclockwise direction, which is the conventional way to form a positive angle, then you can never have a, a, an acute angle, a normal acute theta in quadrant two. It's always going to be obtuse because obtuse angles are greater than 90 degrees. Okay. So, but traveling backwards, <laughs> I guess you can say this is the negative acute angle made with the negative x-axis. Traveling backwards, we see that the acute angle form is our theta reference. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. <laughs> Let me know your feedback. And if I did, that's fine. Just order the complete cram session and you'll have total clarity, okay? So as you can see, intellectual comprehension of this material was not difficult at all. And in the short amount of time it takes to complete the entire cram session, you'll be prepared to answer a battery of questions concerning Algebra 2 concepts. So inbox me at meemedicine at gmail.com to order this complete cram session. Good luck studying, and remember, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it.